This video is very kindly sponsored by DistroKid. I'll be talking about them more later in the video. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, AKA Lucent. I'm a music producer and songwriter. And today I'm going to be reacting to Pang by Caroline Polacek. So let's go. Okay. So, Caroline Polacek has been like a big suggestion on the channel. A lot of you guys seem to be really, really into her. And uh, so I picked one of her songs for like the, cause she's kind of hyper pop adjacent, right? Um, I picked one of her songs for my second hyper pop discovery video on your recommendations, which you can check out. And I really liked it. It was, yeah, one of my favorites from that discovery video. It like, I really liked how it kind of combined a lot of the kind of hyper pop style production with something a little bit more legato and musically rich and whatever. And so many of you were like, when are you gonna do her album? But I'm like, I'll do it now. Um, so this is me doing it now. Um, <laughs> but before we get started, if you're new, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you're not new, then make sure to like this video. And if you're old, <laughs> then check out uh, my Instagram if you want to kind of follow my personal life. Um, yeah, it's at Sing Song Dan. The link is in the description if you just want to click through. Yeah, create a little bit of a deeper connection with you. Yes, I'm wearing a little bit of a different uh, outfit, but there we go. So this video has been sponsored by DistroKid once again. They're a great supporter of the channel. If you haven't heard about DistroKid, they are a music distribution service. If any of you out there are into music creation like I am, then you can sign up for DistroKid and they will distribute all your music to all the top streaming services, including Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, and a whole bunch of even like smaller ones as well. I've been using them for like two and a half years now, and they're a really, really great company to work with. The way in which the pricing is built up, they're actually very affordable. So you can start with the musician plan, everything you need to cover all the basics to get all your music on into all these places. But they have all these kind of extra things that you can then add on, making it very customizable to your own experience. You can start off small and then once you know what you need and once you know what benefits you, you can upgrade. When I realized that for me, it would be really great to be able to set specific release dates ahead of time. That was something that is available on the Musician Plus plan. So that was when I upgraded. So if you want to release your music and do it on your own terms, you can sign up for DistroKid through my video. VIP link which was on the screen and in the description and you can get 10% off your first year. Okay, let's go. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's start with some song number one. This seems to be a shortish one, so maybe it's a bit of an intro. This is the gate. The gate opening. It's an entrance. We're going into the world of Karen Polacek. She's letting us in through the gate. Let's go. Ooh. It's like an 80s pad. It's like a, like a kind of world building kind of sound, isn't it? Cinematic. Mm. This is beautiful. I come here every day just to see your face. I love that melody. I love how she breaks her voice too. Oh, I love like how she's mixed in the octave above, like really subtly. It's beautiful. Mm. Oh, I love that. That was stunning. I loved that as an opening. Like what a cool, beautiful, melodic piece. I loved the kind of big 80s cinematic pad. Very much is kind of like raising the tension, starting. It feels like we're kind of like beginning a movie. Yeah. I absolutely love the vocals and I love the production that they did on them by having the double like up the octave, but quite subtly. Very well recorded because it was like mixed so closely into the into the normal octave. There's a really beautiful effect that they created with that. Really nice to open an album like that. It really sets you up to get ready to feel something, you know? Let's have a look at the lyrics. We've got standing at the gate, I come here every day just to see your face, just to hear you say, there's no need to wait, we will be okay, because finally there's a way to be both free and safe. She's waiting for somebody to tell her that they're gonna be free and safe, maybe free and safe to love each other. Maybe it's hinting at that, that a troubled past between her and this other person. But actually, you no, know, now she's kind of saying, I can see a way, I can see a future. I'm picturing like her kind of going to their house, stood at the gate, watching them come out and being like, hey, look, I think we can make this work. Love it, cool. Really feels like it's setting up a story, doesn't it? Okay, let's go on to the next song. This is the title track, song number two, Pang. Mm. Love that synth. Ooh. 
this one? So warm. Oh, yes. Mm. Wow. Oh. Oh. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, it's so passionate. Like, pan. Oh, beautiful. I've got goosebumps on my arms already. I love the drum production too, it's really slick. Oh, I love that. It's so effective. I love she uses very creative but very minimal production until the moment she wants to grab your attention. It's very cool. Wow, gutting me like a secret. Cool. Tell me what you're afraid of. Oh, I love that. I love how that drops on the offbeat as well. Why well, not on the offbeat? On the second beat. You know what I mean. Oh, I love this. It's so tantalizing, isn't it? The only full section is this, you know. But even then, like, the chords don't resolve, do they? This is so fucking cool. Oh, vocals, wow. I love how the word pang hits you like a pang. You know, it's that rush of feeling. Next song. I loved that so much. There was on so many levels. I really, really appreciated that song. I really appreciate how it withheld the kind of full resolution, you know? Um, and actually in terms of like frequency, it withheld the full spectrum of the frequency for most of the song. It was only really at the points where she went pang that you really got all of the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies and the lush harmonies filling the middle. That was the only point where it all kind of came together, which is so, so clever. When you think about kind of arrangement and music production, like how it's telling a story, because the feeling of getting a pang of a feeling is very much like instantaneous, isn't it? You know, you'll see somebody and you'll go, <gasps> you know, it takes your breath away or like you'll do something and you'll kind of have a rush of like guilt and it just kind of like in that moment, it's almost like unbearable. And she really replicates that in the way that it's composed and arranged, like to have it so kind of a bit disparate, not necessarily full chords, um, the kick, the sub frequency stuff. So the kick and the bass of intermittent, you know, a bit scattered. And then to bring it all that, all of that in together on the word pan creates this feeling of a rush but also having it on the second beat of the bar gives it this like breathlessness feeling it's like it's like a, it is a rush isn't it if it was on the first beat of the bar and it felt very like duh, if it was duh, 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 it kind of feels settled and confident and full whereas if you start something on the second it's like uh, it's like a shock you know and that's what she's using she's using the arrangement there to give this sense of a rush, a sense of a shock, a sense of a sudden feeling of emotion rushing all in at once. And then she takes it away again. And it's honestly so, so good, isn't it? Like absolutely beautifully done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I guess like the feeling is like, it's not necessarily one that's very settled. It's very flighty and excited. So she kind of never does take you to the root chord. Um, and that is, you know, purposeful. It's restless, yeah, that's a good word, I think. There's a look in your eyes when you're hungry for me. It's a beautiful knife cutting right where the fear should be into me. Pang, then I go into you. So it's like a rush of hormones, maybe lust, maybe at the beginning of a, of a relationship, you know, the butterflies in your stomach and stuff, you know. It's a beautiful knife cutting right where the fear should be. That kind of, like, gives me a kind of idea that maybe she's um, afraid of getting intimate and yet she's found somebody that has managed to cut right through all of that. Though there's a lot of kind of like innuendos as well, you know, like opening the door, like cutting into me, going into me, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. So I think, yeah, seems to be like this multi-layered kind of thing of something at the beginning of a relationship, you know, it's not just about sex. It's not just about like butterflies in your stomach getting to know somebody, but kind of a mixture of all these different things. Very, very cool. 
I love that one. If you want to check out the songs that are really currently inspiring me, um, I add all my favourites from these reactions to a playlist called uh, Lucent's Current Vibe. Um, the link's in the description if you want to follow and kind of check out what I'm listening to. But this song is going on there right away. Let's go on to song number three. This is New Normal. Ooh, country. <laughs> Very country. Ooh, hello. Love that. Nice. <laughs> oh, I love this. What a weird combination of references. Fucking cool, though. It might be full on changing key, actually. Ooh. What's that? <laughs> what an interesting collection of sounds and then it goes into this like country reference i love it musically as well like yeah really cool this new kind of normal yeah oh so cool to take something that is such a kind of like, like a sound that is so country, you know, like a, you know, kind of like bent electric guitar lap steel, whatever it is. And to put it in this song that is not country at all, that has like a kind of offbeat, like almost like reggaeton rhythm, but doesn't sound like that at all. <laughs> it's, it's, it's using like elements of completely, completely different genres to create something that is like a, it is really difficult to put your finger on in terms of genre. Fascinating work. Really just so clever. And then musically, it never quite fully fleshes it out. You know, it kind of keeps it bare enough that it almost is, keeps you guessing as to what the key is. Where are you musically? Like, do you feel comfortable? Or is this a new normal. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of the movement of the song. It kind of feels like each time it moves from the kind of verse to the chorus, which is, you know, pretty loose, but like those two sections, it changes key and is in a new normal each time. And it also almost kind of like repre represents that feeling of like upheaval, feeling like it should be normal, but it's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm-hmm. I am really sold on her already. <laughs> Let's have a look at the lyrics. Now, what is this feeling... I, d I know you from long ago. Don't question it, the bottle is empty. Now what is this? Club closing early, fog machines and laser swirling. It's Halloween, I'm sorry for screaming, but I'm afraid. Ooh. She seems to be kind of like, kind of throwing out a lot of kind of like slightly unrelated lines um, that seem to be kind of loosely describing like her new life. I guess maybe post like finding a bit of success and getting used to it maybe. Or maybe it's with somebody, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure where it really sits. Now what is this? It's getting with I hold my breath, you're running fast as the SUV smashes into the sidewalk. And 911 went answer the call. Now what is this? Ooh, wow. Maybe it's about the world at large and like how there's kind of shit going on everywhere and it's like, eh, I guess this is what normal is now. So yeah, maybe it's a reference to the world at large. Let me know what your interpretation is. Let's go to the next song. This is song number four. This is Hit Me Where It Hurts. Ooh, chords. Ooh. Bit trappy. She's certainly genreless, isn't she? She cherry picks, you know? Ha! <laughs> Very different vibe. But still fits. Strangely. Mmm, piano. Ooh. Nice. It's gone to a totally different place again. Ooh. I love the chords in this. Ugh. Oh. Hit me in the heart. Oh, 
I went to the next song. <laughs> I do love an album that doesn't stop. <laughs> I got lost in that one actually. It's a bit trance-like in its uh, in its kind of repetition and in its like from a melodic standpoint. You know, it was kind of chant-like. You know, like it was very low in her voice. It was very much like you know. I'm feeling like a butterfly trapped inside a plane. Maybe there's something going on. If I'm already out of time, then make it worse. Go on and hit me in the heart. Hit me where it hurts. I promise one day you will hate me, but right now just ride it out, ride it out, ride out. Magic carpet over London, through the ceiling, watch you dreaming. Huh. Kind of since it seems to me that she has like a quite a negative opinion of herself in this song. It's like, you know, one day you're going to hate me. Just keep riding it out. Eventually you're going to leave me. Eventually you're going to go, you know. A lot of the lyrics are very dreamlike. The magic carpet over London and the, you know, being trapped like a butterfly. In a, it's very like painting, like a kind of 3D picture. All to do with flight, you know, like even like the stuff at the carousel, the carousel, like... The, the baggage claim and stuff seems like maybe she was maybe following like her like each line kind of feels like it's following the next in a kind of loose almost like a word association kind of format um which is quite interesting it kind of allows her to really and the listener to really kind of go off in the kind of dreams of what she's kind of creating um it's very yeah i quite like how kind of loose and like open to interpretation it is you know i think like the idea of the central line, like, go on and hit me where it hurts, it's almost like she's opened herself up and made herself vulnerable, and she's almost like, I know that you're going to leave me, I know that, like, I'm not worth staying for, so you may as well just, you know, do it now. So it's it's definitely got a dark edge to it. Let's go on to the next one. This is uh, song number five. This is I Give Up. Drums are much more... Rugged. I stop caring, you stop caring. But I don't need and I don't it's like the breaking up of a relationship in a way. Mm. A pathetic kind of sad relief. A pathetic kind of sad relief. Ooh, yeah. It does sound kind of like a relationship, doesn't it? Could be with family. Ooh, I love the kind of distorted harp. That's cool. Mm. Cool. How far can you fall when you're already down, you know? I can't, there's no helping you, you know? Cool. She's very scathing in that song, isn't she? Like, that's why, like, to me, it sounds like, a, like maybe it's a sibling, because it's the kind of language that maybe the you wouldn't necessarily have the courage to be that brutally honest with somebody who wasn't related to you, you know? Lol. <laughs> it could be with a partner that she's breaking up with, I don't know, but maybe I'm just colouring that with my own <laughs> arguments that I've had with my own sister. I love how these songs are just like it's so easy to just get like lost in your own thoughts you know the other thing that makes me think that maybe it's a sibling is that I gave you that told you so look yeah actually maybe it's a relationship because it seems to be like it's not a rough patch it's not a phase you and I we fall apart pathetic kind of self-defeat yeah like the relationship is really unraveling I love the lyric there really like eloquently written love it okay let's go on to the next one this is song number six I think this is Look at Me Now. Mm, love that. Yeah, the ending of a relationship. Oh, she really knows how to write such a beautiful melody. Oh. oh. How could I be sleeping? Yeah. Here we are. I love that. You can't look at me anymore. It's too much history between them now. Ugh. Oh. 
That I can't run from this anymore. I'm gonna need to actually like deal with this situation. Like we can't keep running. This is over. We just need to accept it, you know. Oh, I love it. Love it. Beautiful. Love that. Look at me now. You can't look at me now. Oh, just like really eloquently putting into like, you know, into lyrics like the feeling of being at the end of a relationship where it's like there's too much pain between you. You can't work through this anymore. How are we supposed to work through this when you can't even look at me anymore? You know? Yeah. Beautiful. Heartbreaking. So she's right. So she, I wrote myself a letter, just a single question. When you finally get this, where will you be? So like maybe she's writing a letter to a future self, you know? One of my friends, he uh, wrote a postcard to himself to arrive like five years in the future. And it arrived, like, last month, and he was like, oh, it's so weird, like, <laughs> you know, where I thought I'd be, like, I was in a totally different place to where I ever thought I was going to be. And So it's interesting to kind of get into that frame of mind and kind of think, you know, where would I be if I were to send myself a letter into the future? Would I still be, like, pining over this guy where it, when it's comp so clearly ended? Or will I be a totally different person, you know? Once I do finally let go of this person, like, who am I going to be, you know? You may be a shipwreck or a star. Now rewind the tape back to the start, I'd said I'd never leave you but here we are and you can't look at me now, I haven't changed, I'm still the same but you can't look at me now. Oh this is so beautiful, I love the, these lyrics here like, my friends will tell me girl you're getting skinny, have you not been sleeping? How could I be trying to find the light switch in the dark? Now rewind the tape back to the start, I said I'd never leave you but here we are. I love that, that's so lovely. This is great so far. I'm really enjoying this album. So she just talked about not being able to sleep and now here we go to the next song. This is Insomnia. This is song number seven. Let's go. Ooh. Ominous. Cinematic again. Mm. Interesting. Wow. The isolation in her voice is really cool. I've been told many times it's not owed to auto-tune, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's that effect though, she is replicating that effect, isn't she? It's interesting. And it's not mm, wow. Ooh. Wow. Her voice is incredible. I mean, there is definitely vocal correction on it, but not quite the level of, uh, like, Charlie XX or whatever. Ooh. I love this mode, whatever it is in. It's cool. God, how does she do that with her voice? Just slip straight into her falsetto. It's wonderful. Wow. Oh, it's not ended yet. <laughs> it's fucking dark. I, I can't really tell the lyrics, but the feeling of it is very foreboding, isn't it? Maybe she's trying to replicate the feeling of insomnia, like this kind of dark kind of demon that's coming for you, you know? It's very much that kind of energy, like, could soundtrack the book Insomnia by Stephen King, um, you know? Yeah, interesting. It does seem that she's quite kind of poetically describing how it feels to kind of be suffering with insomnia and never really getting a full night's sleep. How long can sunlight stay warm in the storm? How long till the bath runs cold? Come dawn, come day, come half awake, come blue, come grey, come wage the break. It feels like she's really, like, going through it emotionally, like, post-relationship, I think. Like, because she's obsessing over it, she's not getting a full night's sleep and she's kind of retracting into her head even more, you know? It's that kind of feeling. Let's go on to the next song. This is song number eight. This is Ocean of Tears, which is what I have heard before. If you want to check out my first reaction to it, then it's in my Hyperpop 2 video. The link is uh, somewhere. Um, but yeah, let's have a little listen and a little sing-along. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is gonna be torture. I do love this song. Mm -hmm. Was this the single? Kind of has a bit of a single single energy to it, you know. It's really difficult to sing. <laughs> 
I love the kind of gravitas in this song. Maybe like the in reference to the breakup, the ocean of tears, maybe she's the one with all the tears and this other person doesn't, isn't crying. Maybe that's the thing that's separating them, you know? I love the song musically as well. The song has so much grit and like drag to it, it's like... But it's just so cool. I f***ing love this song. <laughs> love it. It's such a beautiful song. I love the weight of it. You know, it has so much presence. It's really powerful, you know. And I think that like, she has those really unexpected almost like those hyper-pop style moments um, that really just give it like an edge of like grit, you know, that really is surprising and dramatic. Really, really like it, yeah. Yeah, oh my God, I wanna know what it feels like to pull you close and tangle up with you real tight. You know, it's almost like maybe she's like forgotten what it's like to be with this person, you know? Or maybe it's a new person that she's like wanting to like get vulnerable with. And maybe that's why the Ocean of Tears is separating them because like, she feels like she hasn't been able to have the true vulnerability with them yet. You know, she's like, it's right there. I can reach out and touch it, but there's something stopping me. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I just looked at the lyrics, someone's stopping me, I'm going down. <laughs> Let me know what you think all these songs are about, by the way, because I just, yeah. Like, I always rely on the kind of fan interpretations because, like, I'm listening to these kind of out of context with the rest of the artists and what she said and whatever, so be interested to hear. Okay, let's go on to the next song. This is song number... Song number nine. This is Her Big Eyes. Ooh, sounds kind of tropical. Ooh. Harpsichord. Weird. And a rain stick. I can picture you right now. <laughs> this is cool. Ooh. I feel like I've heard this chord sequence before. I love those, that vocal effect, it's almost like ghosting, you know? Mm. Ooh, yeah. God, that like sub is like oppressive. Oh God, I love the production, it's fucking cool. Mm, love it. I love those kind of like almost like 90s hip hop drums in the middle as well. I wonder who is the girl with the big eyes. Mm. Love that. I love how full this feels now. Love her like vocal delivery. I love the melodies. I love how that song kind of went from like really became something really rich and full and really satisfying to listen to. Yeah, very cool. I can picture you right now at a window seat crying for nobody except the world. I can picture you right now running down the street late for nobody except the world. I'm not sure what it's about. Seems to be like, she's talking about maybe, maybe somebody who, in reference to somebody who maybe is quite innocent, you know, the kind of idea that, that you know, they have the big eyes, that they're very kind of, uh, yeah, maybe like innocent, maybe a bit naive, crying for nobody except the world, like someone who can't quite cope with the kind of horrors of real life in a way. Yeah, but I'm not 100% sure what her kind of point is. Does she respect this person or does she not like... Maybe she's a bit jealous of this person and their innocence. I don't know. Today the flags will all fly green at the embassies. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, very cool though. Let's get on to the next one. So this is song number 10, I think. Go as a dream. Oh, waltzing. I like the plucked strings, quite nice. A little bit more of an optimistic vibe. Mm -hmm. 
call stuff strange. <laughs> I like the drum production. Sorry, I'm getting totally lost in these. <laughs> if you're looking for commentary, I'm like, mm, I don't care, I'm just lost in it. <laughs> Maybe say like that about believing you a more like faking it till you make it in a way, you know, kind of be confident in yourself even if you're not, in a way. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, that was a lot more like chill kind of vibes. Yeah, these songs are kind of making me drift off, which I think is kind of a testament to like the worlds that she's creating. I'm kind of getting very like taken into it, you know, in that sense. I liked a lot of the vocal manipulation stuff in there, like the way that she layers up the different harmonies and uh, and like the edited vocal stuff as well. Kind of gives it this sense of like being stuck in her head, you know, in a way. It kind of, yeah, someone changed the clock and left the window open when I must have drifted off. So now she's talking about sleeping, which is kind of a bit of an about term from the like insomnia earlier. So maybe she's kind of like over it. She's realising that she's over it, maybe. But this time you're not coming back, yeah. Slipping through my fist, blurry at the edges, leaving only legend. Go as you dream. Yeah, she's sad about this this, this person that she's leaving behind. But I feel like she's moving on, kind of, m like, moment by moment. And I love this kind of, like, how she's linking it to the, to the, the feeling of sleep. Like, you know, earlier she couldn't sleep because she couldn't let go. And now she's saying, you know embrace the kind of dream like go forward as if you're in a dream and you're actually getting sleep because you're getting over it you know it's it's the the parallels there i think are really really beautiful in a storytelling sense let's go on to the next one this is song number 11 this is caroline shut up <laughs> sometimes i wonder do i love you too much <laughs> shut up <laughs> I relate to that feeling. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to give yourself a stern talking to. Mm. Yeah. She's kind of saying she can't kind of control stuff, right? But then she's regaining control, isn't she? By telling herself to stop being an idiot. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Come on. Ooh. The production of this album is f***ing amazing. I don't think I've said it enough. <laughs> mm. I love how this one kind of rolls in and out of the dynamics. It's really cool. Ooh. Ooh. Love that. Just take away the drums. It's really effective. Yeah, wow. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Love it. It's kind of like giving herself this level of uh, rationale, you know, like rationalizing the situation and just being like, no, you need to get your sh shit together, sort yourself out. And it's kind of quite a good attitude to have because it's so easy to get lost in your own feelings and to get lost in, in the kind of the anxiety of it all and to get like caught up, you know, to the point where like, it's really difficult to see things as they are, you know? So I think it's kind of her giving herself a mantra to kind of get through moments like those. And her mantra is, shut up, <laughs> sort yourself out, you know, giving herself a bit of tough love. Loved how that one was constructed. The dynamics were really nice, quite kind of like smooth and like natural feeling, wave-like, you know. The drum production on it was really cool um, and I love when they took the drums away, that was a really really good section. Yeah, she's really got such a cool mind, I really love where her mind goes in terms of the arrangement and music production of a piece. It's really great at storytelling, that's what I like feel is underappreciated in the production circles is actually using production to aid the storyline of a song. I do kind of think that like 
a lot of pop songs just kind of go for what feels right, what is the trend, what is, you know, it's not very intentional, a lot of music production choices. Um, and I really appreciate hearing an artist who clearly has a very strong intent with what they want to do with their production and the story they want to tell and how they use the production to tell a story you know like like in the in the title song pang that was really like very strongly using music production as a storytelling tool <laughs> okay <laughs> so this song has a great title um this is song number 12 this is so hot you're hurting my feelings which is great okay oh lay back kind of pace I really like the vibe of this one so far. Ooh. Nice. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I love how it's kind of create, like really fulfilling that that feeling of feeling like you're awkward, you know, in comparison to someone else who's like so beautiful and like elegant, you know, feeling gawky and nerdy. It's a really relatable feeling. So I think everyone feels that way, even the cool ones, you know. <laughs> I just yeah. <laughs> I get it. Mmm. This one's really catchy. I can see this being a kind of breakout kind of single, you know. I love that background. Oh. Oh. That bit. I love that. So hot to hurt in my feelings. That was really catchy. Um, I can see that kind of being the single. Like, I love the vibes. Love the vibes. A little bit of a slower pace, relaxed kind of like slightly less serious song which is quite nice a nice kind of uh, comparison to a lot of uh, the fairly heavy emotional kind of material of the album so far and it's certainly a relatable feeling to be like that person who when you like you're on the dance floor and you're like looking at someone and you're just like oh my god how do how can i be so awkward and gangly and uncool when there's somebody there who is so hot and so cool and just knows like so confident and you're just like wow that's unfair <laughs> you were so hot it hurts my feelings <laughs> yeah i've never heard someone really articulate that specific feeling in such a kind of cute way yeah i like it a lot <laughs> it's not like i'm counting the days but it's been 25 <laughs> they're playing our song i cry on the dance floor it's so embarrassing oh okay so it's like remembering maybe somebody that she used to be with and they're sending her photos and she's like mm, it's too hot it's hurt my feelings can't deal Show me the banana, show me the banana. Okay, so it's about sending nudes then. <laughs> so she's out of a bar trying to like, you know, forget this person and they're like sending her the nudes and she's like, it might not be the ex, it might be someone that she's kind of like dating or I don't know. But then she talks about like crying on the dance floor and trying not to miss them and stuff. So I think it might be her ex. Maybe her ex is like trying to get back with her. A little bit more of, an, of a complex feeling there, isn't there? Show me the banana, show me the banana. Relatable. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is the penultimate song. This is Door, which I think is quite interesting to start the, start the uh, album with the gate and then get to the door. You know, maybe the door is the way out. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Or the way in to real life. I don't know. Metaphors. <laughs> let's go. I'm just another girl in a sweater. Mm. To laps round the planet To prove what I was <laughs> Oh, weird. Feels like she's being judged and she's trying to prove herself, isn't she? Mm. And I'm running through to you. Huh. She's like getting lost in a maze. I don't know, maybe she is dating somebody new, I'm not sure. I love this this hook, this chorus. It's really, I don't know, I really like the, the movement of it, you know? Ah. Oh. Is 
describing a sunset as a salt in the wound is interesting. Maybe it's like about maybe about her being led on, you know. But she keeps running through. I, I just not sure who she's singing about, you know. Nice. Oh, that vocal fry is really cool. Ooh. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, something about that I really liked, actually. The movement of it, the kind of way that it kind of rolls, you know, like the way the lyrics and the melody kind of just roll on top of each other. Back in the city, I'm just a girl in a sweater. Another girl in a sweater. Perpetual novice signature on the check made out to you. Maybe it's about feeling like she's at home when she's around this person, because when she's out in the city and, you know, trying to go about her life, she feels like a nobody in a way. Um, took 10 laps around the planet to prove that what I wasn't. And the door slams hard behind you when you leave the house of judgment. Wow. Trying to prove herself for so long and yet there's still always somebody who's gonna judge her and not respect her, you know? Uh, yeah, but this person that she does find does respect her? I don't know. But then like running through the door to an open door to another door to another door to another door. I don't know. It feels like they're leading her on, you know, but the music sounds very positive and very romantic and very settled and happy. This 10 year thing keeps on coming back as well. Feels like not settled, isn't it? The lyrics kind of juxtapose the music in a way. I'm not sure what the intention of that is. It's, it's a kind of will they won't they kind of thing in a way, isn't it? Like they keep on getting back together or they, sp they split up and they get back together and they split up and it's like they kind of keep on going through these doors almost like trying to look for something new. But at the end of it, the the real constant is this person, you know? Let me know what you think. Um, and I'd be interested to hear like how this does align with her real life as well. Right, before we go into the final song, um, if you're new to the channel and you've been watching all the way this far and you haven't subscribed, then I'm guessing you're quite liking the video. So I'm gonna suggest that you click the subscribe button. There you go, this is your chance, do it now. Yay! And actually, if you want to check out my videos a week in advance, you can do so via the Patreon. Basically, if you're part of the Weeping Wendy tier, you can check out the uncut version of my videos full week in advance. So next week's video will be ready now. I think, I hope. And if you're on the Crying Club tier, you can actually check out the edited version of the video the Tuesday before everybody else sees it on the Friday. They're the kind of bonuses you get by supporting me through Patreon. I've had like a few like annoying moments where videos are getting flagged and um, even though it is fair use to use music in my videos, they're still getting demonetized. Patreon is just a bit more reliable and you can support me directly. So either tier, whatever, I re would really appreciate it. Yeah, and hopefully you feel like you're getting something in return. Cool, okay, let's go on to the last song. This is song number 12, 14. <laughs> this is Parachute. Oh, this, go this goes with the falling out of a plane or something. Like, I mean, on the album art, it looks like she's climbing a ladder into a helicopter or something. And this is the parachute, you know, jumping out of the helicopter, maybe. Trust the parachute, yeah. Maybe it's a metaphor about diving into your decisions, you know, trusting your choices. But things can throw you off course. Mm. Wow. Maybe it's about saving yourself and kind of telling yourself, you know, I've got this. You know, things might throw me off course, but I'll be okay, you know. God, her voice is mad. Her falsetto is so striking and like powerful. It's uh, really cool. She landed on the soft ground. She made it. Yeah. Oh, I love that as a final lyric. Beautiful final lyric to kind of say, you know, actually in the end, despite all of the things pulling me one way and another, I actually did manage to land on the soft ground and I was okay. You know, and maybe that's kind of the 
the feeling of the album is this sense of like a lot of tumultuous kind of feelings, a lot of winds blowing her back and forth her not knowing where she stands with this person, her not knowing where she stands with herself. And actually, in the end, when she actually just was you know, centred herself and said, you know, Caroline, shut up, you know, when she actually kind of relied on herself, she managed to navigate herself to the soft ground, she managed to be okay, she got through it and was okay, you know, um, I love that, like, there's a sense of a journey and there's a sense of a feeling, you know, that she's learned, um, something and that the whole album feels like this kind of, like, like a kind of growing up, you know, like a coming of age type kind of thing for her through the lens of this kind of story with maybe with this like relationship. But yeah, what she's taken from it in the other end is like a belief in herself, you know? Yeah, I like that a lot. I love an album that really feels like it was intentionally created to portray a specific story. I do think that there's, in the industry, there's an over-reliance on like just feeling the vibe and just doing what comes out of your soul which is great like I think it's great for inspiration but I do think that like I prefer when artists will maybe use that element that kind of creative place to inspire them but then wrangle those feelings and create something that has direction and has a purpose um and I think that that's what this album does it has lots of disparate elements it has lots of weird creative experimental moments but actually at its core it has a real direction which is quite poetic when you think about the final song about her being pulled in all sorts of directions but actually her putting herself together and landing on soft ground you know finding her direction oh poetry <laughs> i love it oh when she yeah so she references the dreaming and the sleeping and stuff wait from a dream one that started as a nightmare like a war so extreme it raised itself from my memory yeah Love it. Beautiful. So that's the end of the album. Honestly, I'm so impressed. From, like, a music production perspective, most of all, actually, um, because I really do think that she has taken so many disparate elements and somehow, somehow managed to make them seem really cohesive. Every song is unmistakably her, despite the fact that, you know, she uses a harpsichord in one song and she uses a country guitar lap steel thing in another and somehow all of these elements come together i think it takes a lot of purpose intent and like a strong direction um artistic direction to really kind of be able to pull all those disparate elements together but she does it really really well and there's so many songs on there that i really really loved particularly i mean ocean of tears like i already knew i like that one but pang i just thought was genius i thought that was absolutely incredible um new normal i really liked i really liked insomnia ocean of tears obviously hey big eyes you're so hot you're hurting my feelings caroline shut up go as a dream the door all of I, yeah loads of really really great songs i'll be adding to my favorites playlist um and then on top of all that on top of all the production and the storytelling is this completely unique voice that sounds people assure me that assure me that there's no autotune on it i'm sure there is pitch correction of it of a sense but she has like a really ethereal voice that is totally unique and she like really has a lot of vocal control to be able to like move between these low registers and then right up into the tops of her falsetto head voice um and create such a beautiful tone it's uh ethereal alien magical really distinctive maybe that's what really does tie it all together yeah, fabulous. Really, really great. Thank you so much for suggesting her. I can't wait to dig into her back catalogue. Uh, let me know who, sh who I should react to next um, and if I should do any more Carolyn Polachek reactions, of course. Thank you so much for all those people who have supported me on Patreon. The Weeping Wendy's names are coming up on screen now. Those are the guys who have pledged to the second tier of my Patreon and help helping me and supporting me in my career as a full-time, well, currently part-time creative <laughs> person and um, hopefully full time at some point um so thank you so much for your for your support if you do want to sign up for patreon the link is on the screen thank you guys i'll see you next week or soon or now if you want to click on another video yeah go on watch another one go on if not yeah bye <laughs> oh. Oh.